Good evening. I'm calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on Wednesday, October 11th. I am Select Board Chair Eric Helmuth. Tonight's being, meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format uh, consistent with provision by the Massachusetts Legislature. Before we begin, please note the following. First, this meeting is being conducted in the Select Board Chambers and over Zoom. It is being, being recorded and simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Second, persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom can find information on how to do so on the town's website. If you're participating by Zoom, you're reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, we ask you to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. The same goes for anybody who is participating in person and wishes to speak. We ask you to provide your name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Third, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment. Those persons are not asked to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and people watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials found on the town's website, specifically the Select Board Agendas and Minutes page. So tonight we have a relatively brief agenda and I wanna just point out as, a, as is my custom, the opportunities for public comment tonight and some instructions about how we will do that. So uh, tonight, none of the agenda items in my judgment uh, require a specific uh, public comment period. However, we do have the open forum uh, following item eight at which any person can appear and speak for three minutes on a topic of their choice. At that time, uh, anyone in the room, I'll take by raise of hand, anyone on Zoom who wishes to comment just needs to raise your hand in Zoom. If you do not, do not know how to raise your hand in Zoom, now would be an excellent time to Google how to do that. Let's see how much of the town's business we can get done tonight. Before we begin, I just want to note to my uh, select board colleague, colleagues and the, um, and the public that uh, prior to the meeting, I removed one of the agenda items that had been posted. It was a uh, resolution offered by Laura Weiner uh, with the consent um, and advice of the proponents to be considered at a later time. So what moves us to now, what is now item two, which is the review of the select board position on the Mugard development. And I just wanna set the table for this just briefly. Um, at a very recent meeting, we had, I think a very spirited and informative and very welcomed uh, session at which residents in that neighborhood spoke very passionately and very lucidly about uh, their views of the continued uh, development at Mugar. And our colleague, uh, Mrs. Mahan at the time, requested that the chair uh, have a, um, an agenda item in a future meeting in which the select board would have the opportunity to re-establish and re, uh, revisit and, and restate in, in, this, in this select board's current constellation its view on the MUGAR development. And so um, I'm glad to provide that opportunity um, tonight for all our members and I will turn to Mrs. Mahan, my colleague, for further comment. Um, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. DeCourcy is... Uh sort of the lead liaison um, uh, for the Mugard development, and I know we're all aware um, and have been following the other boards and commissions, um, along with department heads that have been interfacing with this project, um, but also recognizing that the board also has its own sort of piece of the pie defined role. Um, but <clears throat> since uh, we, we have done this previously, uh, the, the current development I think is about eight or nine years uh, before us so going through um, different iterations in terms of what it is. And what the board has done in the past, and I, I wanted to um, put forth before my colleagues, is just a, uh, a vote, which would be that the uh, select board is opposed to development um, of the Mugar wetlands. And, and it's always been, and I'm happy if, if anyone wants to expand on that, but um, what we were, when we first did this in, in discussions with previous uh, town councils, um, the more you get into more language, the more you could go down the road you don't want to. So it's always just been a vote uh, just on behalf of the select board. Um, so I would make that motion unless, and I would ask maybe all my colleagues and you know, Mr. DeCourcy if there's something that they're more comfortable with, but traditionally the vote in the past has been that First it was the Board of Selectmen, but now it would be the Select Board um, is, is opposed to any development of the Mugar wetlands. Mr. Corsi. Yeah, I'll, I'll second Mrs. Mahan's motion, and thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, 
Yeah, that's, that's what we discussed last time and since my time on the board and, and going back before then, we have taken several votes to reaffirm our position from, from the initial letter that the Board of Selectmen wrote to Mass Housing on August 18th, 2015, opposing the site. Mr. Hurd wrote a letter on behalf of the Select Board on July 7, 2020. Before that vote, re we reaffirmed our position. We also had a detailed discussion on October 28, 2019, where we presented our position. We've been consistent, to my knowledge. We have been unanimous throughout this um, process in terms of our opposition to the proposed development there, um, all the while respecting the fact that there is a comprehensive permit in place now, and we covered that at the last meeting, but uh, I um, support Mrs. Mahan's motion and certainly support reaffirming our position on this. Thank you, Mr. DeCourcy. Mr. Hurd. Yeah, I think we've all, first of all, sorry for running in late, a lot of moving parts on Wednesdays. Um, I, I don't want to go in depth things that we've said you know, many times, but I'm happy to support the motion and just continue to join this board as we've done since I've been on the board and for many years before that um, to just say that it's not the right site for development of this kind is, uh, you know, for years has been a great push in Arlington to create more housing units, but it has to be placed correctly or else just efforts in general to create more housing will stall if it if the housing that is created causes major issues in town and that's what will likely happen in the at this site so again happy to continue to reassert the board's opposition to the project anything so i would say has already been said so i support it Thank you, and uh, the only thing I will say is that I welcome the opportunity and the first time uh, opportunity I have as a member of this body um, to take this vote and to, and to um, reaffirm that. So uh, any further discussion? On a motion uh, by Mrs. Mahan uh, to reaffirm the select board's opposition to development of the Mugar property. And second Mugar or wetlands? Wetlands, thank you. Sorry, thank no, you. No, Mugar wetlands. Um, we have the uh, Motion by Mrs. Mahana, second by Mr. DeCourcy. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? It is a unanimous 5 nothing vote. Thank you very much. Uh, I missed something important at the beginning. I want to welcome a new person at the table. <laughs> and with, the, with the, my colleague's indulgence, uh, Mr. Town Manager, perhaps you would like to uh, introduce the uh, individual to your left. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, a familiar face, but worth recognizing this evening, and that is uh, Attorney Mike Cunningham, uh, now serving in the position of acting town council uh, following the departure of uh, Doug Heim. So please join me in welcoming Mike to the meeting. Welcome, Attorney Cunningham. Thank you for your commitment to the town. Thank I you. know you will serve us well. Thank you. Item three, um, we have an end of the year budget report by Ida Cody Controller. And an important question I have, Ms. Cody, is um, are you of the school of controller or comptroller in pronunciation? Comptroller. <laughs> and I stand corrected. Tom Comptroller. <laughs> well, thank you for inviting me tonight to um, present and discuss the end of the year um, report, um, budget report. Um, this is the uh, report for the fiscal year 23, which ended on 6 30, 2023. It's a little late, but we pushed it in hopes to get the free cash certified, and we did. Um, this is my favorite report because it's packed, as you've probably seen, with good news and a good start for Jim. Um, I hope you read it and enjoyed all the details. So I'm just going to cover the, the highlights. Um, DOR has certified free cash, 8032011 This is an increase of $2.1 million over last year and the highest in history. Um, water sewer, we have certified retained earnings, 6 million 9 AYCC, 122 Council on Aging, 44 Rink, 82 and the Rec Department um, Recreation, 1 million I'm just going to briefly discuss the expenses and revenue on the general fund. Um, on the expense side, we had an, a net increase in the undesignated fund balance of $3.3 million. 
Um, and the appropriation turnbacks are a net of 3,704,704. Uh, the turnbacks are a combination of, um, it, it, they're actually mostly salaries because they were, they were underspended because we had some vacancies and some, reti some retirements and we didn't fill the positions immediately. We only had one reserve transfer from the, uh, this year and it was for a legal settlement. On the, general, on the revenue, the general fund, uh, we had a surplus of $6.2 million. Um, this is a combination of conservative estimates and um, also a favorable um, economic environment. The main drivers for this $6 million are the build building and wire permits. Um, we exceeded the projection by $1.5 million. Um, this is mostly because of the, My the building at MIRAC, and also we had um, oh, we've seen increased requests for um, permits for... Um, solar panel and car, uh, car chargers, electrical car chargers. Um, the motor vehicle excise um, exceeded the projection by $500,000, and this is supposedly, probably mostly due to the cost, increase of the cost of the cars. Um, we had an increase in fees of a total of $560,000. This is a combination between the ambulance fees because we increased the rates in the ambulance and um, also the um, host community agreement. We didn't estimate the amount, any, estimate, uh, any amounts on the balance sheet because we're not allowed to by D per DOR. Um, also, hotel, motel, and marijuana excise uh, were up five, $560,000. And finally, the elephant, um, the interest income, which we've collected this year, $3 million, and we've discussed it a few times. We had a con conservative estimate but we also had a lot of cash in the bank from the constructions of um, high school and DPW, and the rates were really good. So that um, brought us an extra $3 million, which closed to the free cash. Um, the enterprise funds, not much to discuss here. Uh, we, we pretty much closed, we were on the nose projections versus um, actuals, and we certified healthy retained earnings across the board. Um, you've also requested that we um, report the balances for several funds, um, the ARPA and the stabilization funds, and they're included in the report. I think this, uh, this item would be the most of interest to you, if you have any questions. Thank you, Ms. Cody. Uh, I will now turn to the board for any remarks, questions. Uh, I'll go after Ms. Oh, uh, Ms. Lahn. Uh, 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 First, I'd like to move receipt. Yes. And thank Ms. Cody and everyone else behind you, literally and figuratively, um, that I know there's a lot of work that goes into this. Um, and it was one of the things when I first got on the board, and it didn't happen for more than a decade. Uh, and to get quarterly reports and end of the year reports um, is so beneficial. Um, and it's not just something on a piece of paper or on the iPad, it's something that we all um, watch, look for trends, things like that. Um, and I also want to thank that I see um, with some of the categories um, when we looked at expenses and revenues and they were perhaps out of range of projections. I had asked about with investments, with fire services, if perhaps I was always told a good budget gets you as close to um, you know, because I'd say, oh, 237% more, that's great. And then someone said, well, that's good as an anomaly, but not every year. And I do see reflected in here um, that uh, adjustments have been made um, concerning uh, fire medical services, as well as, I think, fines, uh, because the Mass General Law has changed and has increased those fines. And as, as far as the investment part of it, um, People tell me not to put myself down, but I will leave it to, you know, the investment minds uh, in terms of, and I know we, we deal with standard and poor's or, who, or whomever gets chosen every year, but um, I don't expect to see that reflected in here, but, but going forward. And one of the things that I'm really happy about that this report allows us to do is um, it's so great after COVID to see under Joe Conley and everyone who works over at the Arlington Recreation Department, um, how well they're doing, um, not only in terms of the revenue generated, but if you look behind the revenue generated number, 
um, at the programs that have come back as well as are brand new um, that really um, highlight the Arlington Recreation Department and its properties in so many different ways. So I, I definitely uh, appreciate that. And then um, I just had one sort of technical question and it may be because it's a school question, you get back to me with the answer. Um, but I know somewhere in here, I, I didn't highlight it, but it had to do with special ed um, budgeting collections. And I believe, I don't know if it's the town or the schools that hired a consultant like PCG. Can you give me like four or five sentences on that? I, it looks like it's successful and a good thing to do, if you could verify it. So the federal government reimburses us for special for special ed um, services. Our school department enters in all the data, all the kids they're servicing, and then this consultant gathers all the data, puts the report together, and submits it, and we get the, the reimbursement. Uh, sometimes there's a timing issue. Um, when you deal with the state and government, there is always a delay and getting our money back, um, but yeah, this is how it works. So they, they look at the reports, they gather, the nurses enter and whatever stuff that's designated to the special ed education, um, they enter in the data, gets um, collected, filtered by the consultant and submitted for reimbursement. And again, I'm, I say that is a positive thing. Yeah. Having gone through that world myself, that was always the three numbers in special educations we're so nebulous and I think sometimes it affects programs if you don't know what it is and how to plan and, and finance. So um, that's something that I was really happy to see and that, that it's working. Thank you. That, that one is hard to predict because right. we don't know how much of the expenses they will accept and reimburse. So. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Dickens. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> yeah, so um, just we have some time seen, so I'll just ask a bunch of minor curiosity questions. You can give me uh, really short answers. You know, so um, the clerk was over by one percent, two k. I know it's not a lot of money, but the clerk what? The clerk, the clerk expenditures were up. I mean, they were over by two k, one percent. So if you look at the clerk, um, we voted it together with town clerk election and registers. Yeah. They're voted as a bottom line. So it, the, although the clerk is a 101%, yeah. the election is 95% only. Okay. And the registers is 96. So bottom line, they're still within the appropriation. Yeah, I was just wondering if there was yep. something, you know, maybe, maybe some over time something going on. Just like, I just, keep just, an eye on them. <laughs> just, just, my, just minor. So um, the council on aging was also up by 21K, 6%? The same thing. The council on aging gets voted with the Board of Health. I got you. So they can overspend in one if they underspend on the other. Okay, gotcha. So Airbnb, it brought in 10K. Like how many, how many um, units were that, meaning, no idea? I don't get that data. Okay, all right. Yeah, I was just wondering how much Airbnb um, business was going on, I mean, yeah. and, and whether we had a sense of whether uh, we're capturing all of it or not. Do you have a sense of that? I just get whatever I, 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 the yeah, state sends me, no backup for yeah, it. Yeah, just to say, I, I think that, you know, that might be in the scope of a different employee. Maybe the question would be good for the town manager to, to, to handle just for a more complete answer, you know, about sort of the, the, the policy and the procedures of, of that program. Sure. Thank you. I can't say that I think any of us will be able to accurately predict how much of the revenue we're capturing. I would say it's likely not all of it because I know that sometimes returning guests don't go through the Airbnb platform, and I would assume that we do still have some units out there uh, that are doing short-term rentals in an unregistered fashion. But I do believe, and I'm not sure if we have the information available, that we could at least notify the board of how many uh, short-term rental units we do have uh, through our own local permitting process that may be generating some of this revenue. Thank you, sir. Right. Thank you. No, 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 I appreciate that. And, and, and also, as I said, I mean, these really are just kind of curiosity questions. Just me, yeah, I never know what I'm going to do with it. And, and since we have the time, you know, I'm doing it. You know, so um, so this is one where I just don't understand. I mean, and so a lot of times I will ask questions, people put people on the spot, and I say the reason is I just didn't have time to call beforehand. You know, but um, at the end of um, I forget which paragraph, there's a, there's a sentence: the balance of 1.5 million was closed to free cash. You know, what does that mean? 
Uh, wh where are you looking? Okay, let me help find it. You know, so and it's just it's just ignorance. Yeah. On my okay. Part. So I think you you're talking about the um, collective bargaining. So what happens? We let's say we we oh is, or is it reserve it's on the fund? Other. I mean, so it's on page one. It's the, the last sentence fund. on the other. Oh, the reserve fund. Okay, so the, so um, we appropriate uh, one point five million dollars in the reserve fund just in case some uh, departments run out of money and we need to transfer it. If we don't transfer it, everything turns into free cash. It's it, it's a turn back, and it goes towards the calculation of free cash, meaning we raised the money but we didn't need them because we didn't have any emergencies like the legal settlement. So, so if we don't use it, usually we come here for snow and ice, yeah. but DPW had enough money to cover yeah. the snow and ice. So it's just usually for emergencies. So then close to free cash means it stays in free cash or it goes to the general fund? It's general fund. Okay. It stays right. with the general fund, yes. Right. I just think, I just, you know, just ignorance on my part and I had a chance to ask me you know. So regarding the earnings on investments, you know, so, so it says that I mean, some of it was due to higher interest rates, I mean, so we got a little higher return, um, well, quite a bit higher return. Are you anticipating that costing us more in borrowing? This upcoming year? Um, we don't know where the rates are going to go. Um, I enjoy them even, I, even in my personal bank account. <laughs> but um, we definitely, the balance has gone down. We had a large amount of cash to build the high school and DPW. We had roughly, we started the year with $100 million and we ended with like $50 million. This money collect money, uh, collect interest right. in the bank. So that's why. So yeah. we had the interest rates were, were high. Some of the banks, MMDT, had five yeah. percent. So that adds up. Uh, but now we're not going to have so much cash on the books. Yeah, right, right. That, Be that, because we've been building. And that's in, that's in terms of I me mean, what we're getting from savings. But my question is, are we anticipating an increase in the cost of borrowing? Uh, Mr. Dickens, I think that that's a broader question maybe that, that the town manager would like to speak to. Sure, Len. Without getting into specific like percentage basis points, I think to answer your question, we are making more in interest than we would be in paying on our borrowings. So we're still getting, uh, we are projecting to receive uh, favorable rates when we go out next for a borrowing as compared to what we're receiving in interest, but that's just again, due to our strong bond rating and being a, uh, you know, a community who has an attractive issuance when we, when we offer it. Right. I mean, so so I, I get that. I mean, it's just that there's been, I mean, some people weren't expecting rates to go up as much as they did, and they've gotten a little caught in that. You know? And I'm not like, saying that we're in trouble or anything. I'm just asking if, if me, we're anticipating a higher rates, me, maybe a little higher than we were expecting, which I know is a little, I mean, contradictory to the word anticipating. So that, that was the basis of the question. So yeah, I, I would agree like the next time we borrow we will the rate will be higher than the last time we borrowed for sure. All right. You know, so, um, so, so, so uh, on blue bikes, I mean, there's 100k. I see there's no spending. Um, actually, mm, the planning um, the planning director is working on it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what is the holdup. Um, yeah. I've touched base with her, and she said that she does have uh, the project is on on her table, but she hasn't started yet. Okay, all right, a little bit of a scrappy, a little scrappy in town meeting on that. One. So, so, so it's like it's, it's all. I was just curious. I mean, it's, it's good. It's good that we got the money. You know, I mean, I was just kind of wondering what was going on. And the last one, a little humorous. You know, so I see that the revenue on cemeteries was a little low. Well, is, is is that because fewer people, maybe living a little longer? Uh, well, I mean, we charge, I believe, two thousand dollars for opening and a um, hundred dollars for foundation. So I don't. Know, I think. I guess it depends on. Well, I, I think how many customers we yeah. have. <laughs> I, I think Ms. Cody is, is an outstanding yeah, yeah. Uh, accountant, but the, the expertise for that probably falls on the cemetery commission. So, right. Yeah. All right. Well, so well, I, I, I'm hoping that we have less reason. So thank you. Yeah. That's it. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. I can think it's safe to say that you always keep us on our toes. <laughs> Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, Ms. Cody, for the report. The quarterly we. The, Quality reports are very informative. The year-end report is especially so because we can see the results of what's happened throughout the year, what's being turned back, where we met, uh, 
ex expectations, and, and here it, it, it's all good news in terms of where expenses came in and where we came in on our, our revenue estimates. And, and uh, I would say to Mr. Diggins' question on the reserve fund, the reserve fund is there for unforeseen circumstances. The fact that we didn't have to tap into that much is, is actually good news. There weren't unforeseen events during the year that required, required those funds. Um, so I, I, I wanted to thank you. I had a couple of questions. Just one of them was um, related to what Mr. Diggins said on just in Warren articles in general. And in Warren articles, once they're voted, if you can just clarify this, um, by town meeting, that money is set aside until the warrant, whatever purpose the funds are spent, unless there's a vote, a subsequent vote to return the funds. Is, is that, am I right on that? So usually the, the regular appropriation general fund, they're one year. If you don't didn't spend it by the end of the fiscal year, you didn't encumber it, you lose it. With the articles, we give you two years to spend it. So I always check on them. I see when was the last appropriation. I trace the money, and then I touch base with them. If they don't, if the departments don't have encumbrances or invoices for it, then I'll just take it away and close it to free cash. Okay, great. No, thank, thank you very much, and thank you to Mr. McGee as well. I know he, he worked with you on the uh, on, on, on the report and uh, the, as our, our the finance director and deputy town manager. So thank you very much. Yep. Thank you, sir. Mr. Hurd? Thank you for the presentation. Um, I always, I think I say this every time, but I enjoy these. It, it's, it's good to get an update on, uh, you know, we deal with so many issues in, in town, but luckily I'm able to rely on the finance gurus to run the town financing. So it's never been an area that I immerse myself in, but just to see the top sheet and to see how well our town is run by the people that are responsible for the finances is really impressive every time we get to see this, especially as we go through, you know, we, we have an upcoming vote to uh, add money to the override stabilization fund and it shows we can go to the town, some of the town's people who say, hey, you know, manage your money better and say, look, you know, we're under budget, we're very well run compared to other cities and towns, and this re report kind of gives us the fuel to hit back against that. So, again, very impressive, no questions, um, and thank you for the report. Thank you, sir. I will add my uh, my appreciation to that. I, every time that we, we do this, um, I'm amazed at how, how much our team understands this really complex and diverse budget, and particularly Ms. Cody. Um, as the guardian of, of a lot of this. I sleep better at night knowing that your eyes are on this at all times. Thank you. Thank you. And actually second that, Mr. Chair. The, actually second the receipt of the report. Oh, oh very, okay. thank you. I was gonna say Yeah, so we yeah. did not have one. Oh, girl out. Ah, that's right. All right, so to that end, we have a motion to receive uh, from Mrs. Mahana seconded by Mr. Diggins with sort of a bookends of motion to second here. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? It is a unanimous 5 nothing vote. Thank you again. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Um, in following the string of our, uh, of our outstanding town uh, employees and leaders, we have a Health and Human Services update from Christine Bongiorno, Deputy Town Manager. Um, if you'd like to come up and, uh, and face the music. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, by way of explanation, um, I think most people know, but for the public's information, um, until very recently, Ms. Bajuna was the um, department head for Health and Human Services, so this made the most sense to, to give us an update on whatever we Great. think we should know. Great, thank you. I don't know, Steve, if you wanted to give context to the update? Um, yeah, if you, if, do you want me to start or do it? It's up to you. No, why don't, why don't you go ahead and I'll, okay. I'll add some Sure, yeah. sure. Um, so there were conversations that were happening earlier in this year um, just around AEDs, um, which are basically used um, when somebody has a, a medical event in a, in a building, in a public place. And those are the, the boxes that are placed in, in various um, locations, um, entrances of buildings. And, you know, what we were noticing in town was that not every building, not every town building had one. And where they were placed was different in every location. Um, who was in charge of the upkeep was a lot of people were unsure. So we, what we did was we looked at um, developing a, a systematic program across all the buildings um, 
in partnership between the health department and the fire department, what we did was we had our teams go out and do an assessment, a basic assessment of what we have, where they're, they're located, um, what the device model number is, the battery, how often they have to be changed, and, and really who's responsible in each location. So we did a basic assessment. Um, we determined locations that didn't have AEDs, um, and we developed a plan to, um, you know, over the course of the next several years, basically install new ones in locations that didn't have them. And then in locations where they may not be visible, we're planning to move them. Town Hall is a great example of that. The current AED is located right outside the elevator. It may not be as visible or as obvious to people, so um, the plan will be to move that to a more visible location, um, while also providing um, training to building occupants so that they know where the AED is and where, how to use it. Basically, you know, they may be located on the wall and um, people in various offices may not know where it is or, or even what to do or, or when to use it. So um, the plan will be to take the training to um, building occupants. So starting in town hall and then moving out to the other buildings. In addition to the AEDs, we also found that there are these SAM boxes, S-A-M, and these are boxes where um, they're being placed in various public locations all across the state. Um, they contain Narcan, which is um, used in the event of a, a, an overdose. Um, and so our goal is to have those in some of our more public locations, such as the library, um, the, um, the ice skating rink, as well as town hall, and um, most likely the Department of Public Works because of its location to um, some sensitive areas, including the, um, the park across the street. So um, we have this plan with the, between the Health Department and Fire Department, um, and we will be starting uh, to uh, install and move these devices and also um, provide training to building occupants, um, likely within the next six months. So. Thank you very much. Mr. Corsi. Yeah, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Bongiorno. I I'll provide a little context now on the, um, on the AEDs, and, and I want to thank Ms. Bongiorno. First, congratulate you again on your promotion to the Deputy Town Manager, but we've had discussions since the spring, and um, it, this resulted from an experience I had um, in March. I was at Boston City Hall, and a person behind me going through security collapsed, and um, Luckily, there was a defibrillator that was in the lobby um, and that the security personnel at City Hall had been trained on the emergency medical intervention. And um, not only did the person who took over um, starting CPR and, and actually using the defibrillator is absolutely amazing, but just keeping everybody else calm because she, she knew exactly what to do that calmed everybody else down, but also saved this man's life. There's no question about it. And, and um, until the EMTs arrived, and, and uh, it really, looking back, it was March 7th, a really a, a emotional day when I, I, I think about it now, but a remarkable, remarkable inter act by, by the employees and the, the whole team. They're recognized by Mayor Wu after that happened. Um, as a result of that and seeing that um, Ms. Bongiorno and I have been talking um, throughout the spring and summer about one, you know, making sure that employees know where the AEDs are because that, that, that was one issue at first, you know, finding it. Uh, but two, knowing what to do in the first minutes of a medical emergency, and that's what um, I think this training will, will happen um, going forward, so critical until the fire department or the EMTs can arrive. Those first few minutes are critical, and I, I saw it, and the person is, is, is alive and doing well. Um, that that happened that day because of that experience and, and, and the calmness and, and just having that equipment nearby and available. So thank you for bringing this along. And, and, and I, I encourage people who work for the town, people in the community, I, I know that the hospitals have that type of uh, training in addition to what the town's doing. It's so important because you never know if you're going to be there, and, and, and thank God this person was there uh, that day because um, it, it was a, a, a dire situation. So, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Corsi. Um, uh, oh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Freeney. Yes, thank you, Christine. I just wanted to be opportunistic and add while we're on the topic of AEDs that uh, Recreation Director Joe Connolly recently shared with me that 
following the rollout of the uh, outdoor AEDs that we had installed at Thorndike Field and Hills Hill, there has been uh, significant interest in rolling out and expanding that program in the community. And the resident who started that program has already made an additional significant donation to the town. And we're already looking at purchasing three more climate controlled units for, I believe they're gonna be designated for McLennan Field, Heard Field, and probably over at the Spy Pond Tennis Courts. So again, you know, great public interest in these devices and the, what they can do in the event of an emergency. And we're looking not only to expand them in our buildings, but also uh, at our athletic facilities. So thank you for letting me share. Yeah, that. no, thank you. Um, Mrs. Mon. And, and just a quick question. Um, and if we don't have an answer tonight, that's fine. Um, but are all the AEDs pretty much universal in the sense that um, I know for the sports groups that we belong to, we go through BLS, ALS, AED every two years. And the, the ones that we're trained on, and if you know, I'm assuming that there's just one type of AED and the ones that we're trained on in class is first you're trained on how to apply it and then the AED first tells you if this is an appropriate situation um, to continue to step two to apply the device. And I was just wondering, are all AEDs like that? The ones that are in public locations are. They're made by different companies, so they may have different pads or they may look a little different, but for the most part, they're all similar to what you were trained on, the, the ones in public locations. The ones that are used by fire and police are the professional versions that are used also by hospitals, and so they're obviously different. Um, but the ones that are in public locations will be doing the universal training, um, and they're, they're generally the same. Yeah. And so it's, it's a um, verbal clearance, yeah. voice yes. clearance, versus yes. if you were on EMS with a ALS. Exactly. They don't have, they have, they just look at the readout. Okay, I was just thinking of that when Mr. DeCorsic was raising that, and I was thinking when I, when we get trained, and I'm like, is it just the ones we're getting trained on? But they all do that, so. And I encourage anyone, um, definitely, all my, all my children, two of my three children, once they became parents, um, with the exception of my daughter, Rebecca, because she's a coach, but uh, my son-in-law, daughter-in-law, and son all got, CPR training right away, which is different for infants and then for children and AEDs included, even though I have no AEDs in my home. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Ms. Majerno. Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Ms. Mahan. I think I know the answer to the question, but so of the AED boxes that are either in, say, in this building or at the rink, are they open? Like, it they doesn't can. require, no, like, a special no key problem. or anything, so anyone can get into the box? Correct. Um, I know you mentioned there was training at hospital. Would the town, has the town ever considered kind of sponsoring training locally? Because I've, I mean, I coach every day of my life, and I've never been trained. I've done training to run drills for hockey, but I've never been trained with AEDs, and a lot of the training we do now is remote anyways. Um, so it's certainly something as a coach at a baseball field would lo like, the discussion, this discussion opens and it is almost scary to me as someone saying, well, you know, I don't know if it's the appropriate time. Like, how am I going to go and use these things to revive somebody? I'm not a medical professional. So I assume they are somewhat user-friendly once you have the training. But, I mean, it would be interesting, at least publicizing, you know, when the training's available and sure. when people can do it. And if there was, you know, a, a couple times a year that we could do it at town hall or somewhere where we bring people in and keep it open to the public, I think yeah. that would be really beneficial. We had talked about um, doing the building occupants, so the, the town staff, and then taking that a step further and doing commit, you know, offering it to committees, so people that are in our buildings at night, um, and then also to the sports community. I think that we, we had discussed that, and that could be another phase with, yeah. within our program. And I think we're you can put it back on, on the baseball to say, just so you guys know, now there's AEDs at these fields. So as part of your training, you take all your coaches and only like the baseball can pay for the training. But to, just to make sure that all those programs know that they're there and you can say, you know, put the onus on them to have the coaches train. I just, like I said, I mean, I've, every day I'm somewhere and I've never, I, 
I wouldn't know the first thing to do if I even opened up that box. So um, I'd be interested in getting trained myself right. and making sure others are that uh, are around the boxes. And so, thank you. Well, I guess we were on the same wavelength. You know, I guess for me, it was learning about uh, that uh, with the T uh, when the guy was killed uh, with his hand stuck in the door, I mean, that, that you know, if someone had pulled an emergency stop, I mean, they could have I mean, presented that, you know, and so, so, um, so I, I, you probably weren't here in the meeting when, when I had kind of brought up the whole AED thing, so I'm, I'm glad that we have multiple you know, people thinking about this, and, and beyond the AED training is also just first aid training, you know, and, and a large component of that I mean, is just having someone who is kind of taking charge of the situation and making sure you know, that 911 is called because there, there are more than just I mean, heart events. I mean, there's choking, uh, which is a big one. You know, so I wouldn't I mean, ask the town to take responsibility for that, but as we tell people I mean, to get trained I mean, for ADs, it's like if you have it in you to even get first aid training, you know, it's really, it's really helpful you know, I mean, and useful. So, so thank you uh, for doing this. Thank you for doing this. You know, and, and Thank you very much. Um, just a uh, further question, um, and this is in the Department of Fun Facts about your select board chair. Way back in the day, and more decades ago than I were to care to think, I was actually a Red Cross CPR instructor, and in fact, an instructor of instructors. But that was long before AEDs were available to the public. Um, and since then, I'm aware the CPR technique for the public has changed considerably. But, but that really comes to the point of, um, with, with these devices particularly, if someone, a member of the public, were to find themselves in a, in a situation where someone has no pulse and is not breathing and the AD is available, but they have not had training, um, can they do harm with those devices? Would you recommend that they you know, use them or not use them in that circumstance? Well, the, the first step is to call 911. Of and course, then yeah. um, when you open the box, it walks you through the steps. Um, as um, Diane Mahan had mentioned, um, it'll, it'll tell you to peel off the pads, put them on the body, and it'll tell you if it, if it needs, you know, it'll read the, the heart rhythm mm -hmm. and it'll determine whether or not the um, shock will be given and if it's needed or not. Um, but while that's happening, we, we hope that the ambulance is on its way. You know, you, you should have called the, the ambulance at that point. But um, yeah, there's, you know, it, it'll walk you through very simply what to do. Yeah, that's helpful to know. So, I mean, if I got this right, my takeaway being that, you know, call 911 first. Mm -hmm. um, and that it's certainly preferable to have the training because you'll be more confident, um, but that the devices are designed to prevent you from hurting somebody right. if you follow the instructions. Yeah. Yes. I think it's an important message to have out there for the public so that people don't, don't hesitate to offer aid, you know, if they're in, the, in, in that situation. <coughs> Mr. DeCourcy. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, and, and just coming back, but I don't think that can be repeated enough. Yeah. That that day, the person who actually used the AED and performed the CPR, the first thing she did, she said, "Okay, somebody call 911." Yeah. And a person was identified. Two people called, but one got through, and then she went to work. So critical, call 911 first. Yeah, it's a situation where I like a lot of people will assume somebody else did. You know, so exactly just to be point to somebody. You know. So well, we've all had our, our turn at public health education now. Uh, and uh, helping you out a little bit, not that you need it. But I want to thank both you, Ms. Borgiano and Mr. DeCourcy, for your leadership in uh, awareness and building the town's capacity for this. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving on to our consent agenda. We have a items 5, 6, and 7, a request for a special one-day beer and one license um, on October 29th at Buckfield for a fundraiser by Kelly Grealish. Request for permit for a Veterans Day parade. Saturday, November 10th, uh, November 11th, <coughs> excuse me, from uh, the Department of Health and Human Services. Request for a con contractor drain layer license, Galway Excavation LLC by Anthony Kerwin. <coughs> Pardon me, I'll turn to the board for discussion and motions. Uh, so, motion. Uh, Mr. D. Yeah, motion to approve consent agenda. You know. Second. And, all right. I can get you some water if you want. Want to get you some water? Yes, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, but a couple of us could use a glass of water suddenly. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know what it is. Dry, dry air. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. <clears throat> Just wanted to highlight um, the uh, event down at Buckfield um, for uh, the Dan Kelly Foundation. Uh, 
Arlington resident police officer um, foundation has been set up in his memory on the 29th. Um, uh, I, his wife, Kelly Grealish, Kelly and others um, have really done a lot of work on this and put it together. But again, I want to highlight Joe Conley, um, who really has been working with the family and with the event to uh, really expand it. And um, there will be uh, a beer, not garden, beer truck there, um, getting all the approvals for that. And it's mostly a family event for the, for the free skate, but then there'll also be a large screen TV because it will be a Patriots game or a football game if anybody wants to stay outside and watch that. So um, anyone who can make it uh, coming down on uh, October 29th, I believe the skate starts at, I think, I think it's one to five, but, um, uh, and of course, any, any members of the board that, you know, can make it down there. There, there. There'll be other things. It's sort of a, I don't want to call it a photo booth because it's really a lot more than that. It's uh, Chuck Coughlin, um, who works for several of the news stations and for the uh, Patriots down at Gillette. Um, so it's, it's more, a more advanced, I say, photo booth. So it's going to be a great event, and anyone who can make it down um, for a great guy who I miss terribly every day, along with so many other people. But... Um, People have told me as long as you keep remembering people and, and talking about them, um, then they're still there with you, but just in a different way. So that's October 29th. Thank you. Well said, Mrs. Mahad. Thank you. Any further discussion? A motion to approve the consent agenda by Mr. Diggin, a second by Mr. Hurd. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? It is a unanimous 5 nothing vote. <coughs> I'm using the button. Hey, Bale's need water over. I got one right here. I don't know what it is. Some, some of us think ahead. <laughs> mm. Yeah, something in the room's a little dry. All right, we have appointments on item eight, the Arlington Committee on Tourism and Economic Development. And the uh, Nicole Gustos. Um, do we? Yeah. Hello. Good evening. Uh, thank Good evening. you very much for your willingness to serve. If you'd like to just uh, briefly tell the board why, what your interest is and what you're looking forward to. Sure, I'm happy to discuss. Um, I have over uh, I have over ten years of experience in tourism, and I am worth I am uh, um, experienced at working uh, with every iteration of tourism from the small local level and laddering up to the national level. And I also understand how we can plug into those larger organizations in order to promote what Arlington has to offer. Um, in addition to that um, I am just enthusiastic about everything that they're doing. Um, I'd like to help out with all of the things that uh, relate to tourism and history in our region because I'm a huge history buff. Um, and I also studied history in college and worked as a historical documentarian um, for several years. Um, I think that Arlington has a lot to offer, and I, I recognize currently we only have one hotel and a limited number of other things, but I would like to see us leverage that and, um, and then see what we can do to build off of that in order to bring people in the into the community and have them spend their dollars in our great businesses. Thank you very much indeed. I will now turn to my colleagues for motions and uh, comments. Mr. Hurd. Thank you, and thank you for your willingness to serve. Um, I've been on the representative to ATED for a few years, and it's been, uh, we've been on a recruiting kick, and it's not, not always the, uh, the committee that people jump up to serve on, but it really does serve a really important function, especially, I know, I'm sure you've had conversations with Angela about the 250 celebration that's coming up in the next few yep. years that we're working towards and your experience really drops right into what we're working on for that celebration to try to tap into national networks to get a little prominence for the town of Arlington, um, formerly Mononymy, um, during that celebration time because there will be a great influx of tourists at that time. And mm -hmm. you know, this committee also in recent years has, in the wake of COVID, really put a lot of efforts 
towards the economic development piece of it, trying to work with businesses and come up with creative ways to support our local businesses. Um, sometimes in town, the interests of local businesses take a backseat to some other agendas, but it's good to have one, at least one committee that's really working to make sure that we can support those people that come into Arlington to start businesses. And you know, th that's, we transitioned the committee about a year ago to try to you know, put that front and center and to fuse the two ideas of tourism and business development together. So it is a great committee. It's, it, it's a great group of individuals that you'll get to know very well um, and run very well by Angela. So thank you for your willingness to serve and um, happy to move approval. I wonder if that was coming at the tail end of that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. Hurd. Any further comments or questions? Mr. Diggins. I'll be happy to second that. And I have a quick question, Mr. Hurd, and then um, one for, for, um, for, sure. for our appointee. What's the proper way to say 250? <laughs> Semi-quincentennial. Thank you. Thank you, Ida. And, and to, uh, to our appointee, Ida, uh, if um, you get us some, some um, tourists from Australia, you get another term, okay? You know, so, so I'm impressed well, with the connection to Australia. I, I will work very hard on that. Um, I, um, I, I, will, I will do my darndest to, uh, to use my Australian tourism connections to start bringing people from down under up to Arlington to see what we've got to offer. Great, great. Hey, welcome. Um, and thank you for doing this to me. I've done some work with you, so I, I know what a bundle of great energy you are. So, so um, we look forward to what you can do. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Excellent. Thank you again for your willingness to serve. Uh, you bring an outstanding background, and I look forward to your contributions. On a motion to appoint by Mr. Hurd and seconded by Mr. Diggins, all in favor, please say yes. Yes. Or, yes. Oh, wow. I meant to say aye, but you, you just followed right along. We, that yeah. works. All opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you very much. We see our allegiance you to you, Mr. Chairman. I, I am, and thank I you am to truly touched. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we now uh, arrive at open forum. Uh, this is the part where you raise your hand in Zoom if you want to participate. Um, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Do we have any uh, members of the public? There's nobody here in the room. Um, well, I mean, there is, but they're, they're all staff <laughs> who wish to speak at uh, open <laughs> forum. I mean, Mr. Wiki, if you, the spirit moves. <laughs> all right, seeing none, I believe that, that closes open forum. Uh, thank you very much. Moving on to traffic rules and orders and other business. Uh, we have um, discussion and approval to ref select board report to special town meeting from uh, Attorney Cunningham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just one article for the board's consideration as part of the report. This is an article that was discussed and voted upon by the board in its September 25th, 27th meeting. Uh, it's noted that uh, Mr. DeCourcy recused himself from the discussion and vote on this article. I believe that it accurately reflects the changes that the board requested at that hearing. Uh, I believe that the, the terms of the um, article are correct and the comments were changed in accordance with some of those that were requested. As a reminder, this is the prohibition on new fossil fuel infrastructure and new construction and major renovation um, that was set forth at the meeting last on September 27th by our sustainability manager, Talia Fox, and also sponsored by the Clean Energy Futures Committee. Thank you, Attorney Heim. Uh, questions, motions, discussion from the board? Mr. Hurd. Move approval. And just say that we're very happy to see that it says recommends and not urges. <laughs> You've already <laughs> one upped your previous uh, <laughs> town council. <laughs> it's been stricken from the computer, Mr. Hurd. <laughs> I did do a control F on that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'll second. Just kidding, Attorney Hunt. <laughs> we have a second from, from Mrs. Mahoney. And um, I, I, I want to thank Acting Town Council um, for contained in the comments is f for the uh, fossil fuel 
special warrant article is the tie-in. I, I don't know if maybe you can give two or three sentences, because I know I've spoken to people out in the public um, regarding um, some who, it, it seems like the uh, special town meeting warrant article on fossil fuels, um, I haven't found anybody that, um, person in the street, um, that hasn't been supported of, supportive of it. Um, but there is sort of a, a tie-in or a partnership with the MBTA Communities Act, and I was just wondering, I, I'm, I, I'm thankful that you do have it in the comment, and perhaps if you could just speak two to four sentences on that in terms of what the heck is Mahan talking about? This is the fossil fuel. Why is she bringing up MBTA Communities, if I may, Mr. Chair? Yeah, in the meeting here? Yes. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, sure. absolutely, Ms. Mahan, and thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, so was, when the town passed its clean, um, clean heat bylaw, Back in two, 2020, the state said, you, you can't do that. We're going to do it as part of a state program. And so the state passed legislation and invited a very small group of communities, in fact, only 10. Arlington was first to get in to participate in the fossil fuel f demonstration pro uh, project. And, but as part of the requirement to participate in that project, the town or community has to pass an MBTA community's bylaw prior to a certain time. So that's why the two are tied together. Um, so. If a failure to pass an MBTA community's bylaw by the special town meeting would preclude us from this program. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mahan. Any further discussion? I'll just add, add for myself that, um, and, and we you know, expressed our views, I think, when, when um, Ms. Fox came to present this to us at our last meeting, but I'm, you know, I'm really happy. I think this is a really good summary of the discussion. Um, you know, I, I was tempted to, to suggest uh, strongly recommends, but I think I'll just <laughs> keep my powder dry. And, uh, but I think that I know that we, you know, that, that there's a strong sentiment on the board um, in support of this program and support of the values that it represents for the, for the towns and its priorities. So we have a motion to approve the final uh, vote and comments by Mr. Hurd, seconded by, Mr. by Mrs. Mahan. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous 5 nothing vote. Thank you very much. Okay, now we have an update, uh, an overnight parking pilot update by Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, so did you all get the PDF that I sent? It's okay. You know, if, if, if Ms. Mahat, I mean, Ms. Mara wants to pull it up, that's fine. But I don't think, I don't think we'll need to, you know. So this is just very preliminary, you know. As you can see, you know, it's kind of evenly split between East Arlington and, and, um, um, well, Arlington Heights or non-East Arlington means that I kind of drew the line I mean, uh, at Pleasant Street, Mystic Street. So precincts one through seven mean um, is East Arlington, eight through 21 um, is non-East Arlington. You know? uh, and and <laughs> precinct three um, tends to overperform a lot. You know? I mean, it does this time. It has nine of, <laughs> of, of, of um, the, the, the slots. I say that because precinct three is also having three Precinct meetings, you know, this fall. So, so, uh, uh, and, and, um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, just a little clustering, you know, um, nine, um, three, four, and five. I mean, uh, I think probably have the top, yeah. I mean, um, they have, um, nine, seven, and eight, respectively, in terms of, um, permits. So, we see a little clustering, I mean, um, in, in those precincts, I mean, but as I said, uh, overall, I mean, they're pretty evenly split across town. I mean, um, nine, precincts nine and 15 have none. I mean, actually, nine, 11. And 15 have none. Actually, 9, 11, 15, 18, and 19 have none. You know, so so um, but you know, it's only 60 out there. You know, so so um, so that's that's where we are. You know, I, I talked um, uh, with Chief. You know, and as you all know, we we're not really seeing any emails. You know, and she did. Uh, um, she asked for a quick little comparison. You know, complaints um, before and after the pilot. Not not seeing any difference. Meaning, not seeing anything. Um, really relating to the pilot <coughs> itself. I mean, so that's just preliminary, you know. So what I will ask you all to do is think about you know, what questions uh, you would like answered when we do uh, the final analysis, you know, because the goal is to do that analysis pretty quickly. I mean, mainly because it's like you, know, you wait and things come up. I mean, as soon as this thing is over, it's like, I mean, let's have the questions ready to go, you know, and, and, and try and get those questions answered as quickly as possible. So I'll, if the chair will permit it, maybe um, in December, I'll ask to see, you know, if there, people have questions, you know, essentially be, 
I'd like to see if there has been um, any complaints that are directly related to to the pilot. I mean, people are, of course, going to have their philosophical positions about it. I mean, I don't really expect those to change. I mean, but we really want to see you know, are there any complaints or any issues that came up as a direct result uh, 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 of the pilot. So, so that's that's it. You know, um, yeah, it's another way to let people know it is going another two months. I mean, so uh, you can sign up. It seems like one person signed up as late as um, the fifth. Yeah, so, so take advantage of it if you can, if you want. So that's it. Any questions? Thank you. Any discussion or questions from the board? Good. All right. Thank you for your work on this, Mr. Dickens. Sure, no this problem. is useful information. You're welcome. All right. Uh, we now go to <coughs> uh, me. item 11, the Transportation Advisory Committee, Downing Square. Uh, memo and uh, Ms. Marr, uh, if you would promote Jeff Maxtus to the uh, panel, he's come over from the TAC meeting um, and is available. But I'll uh, let Mr. Diggins um, carry this one. Thank you. You know, so I'm just trying to pull up that um, memo. So I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I take it you all have, have seen it and, and read it. So I mean, essentially, I mean, it's really adding more information to the signs. And we have two choices, um, whether we put those additions on all six signs, or whether we put them on three of them. And the three are the ones that have uh, the most traffic. Uh, TAC recommends all six. You know? and I don't think the cost would be prohibitive, I mean, doing three more signs. I mean, uh, um, and so. Uh, I asked me, uh, Mr. McTudis, if he could be here because if there were any historical or questions based on what's happened there, historically he's been around for a long time and he could answer those questions about maybe other work TAC has done I mean, on, on that intersection and why I mean, um, we think signs I mean, are the better way to go as opposed to trying to do a signal uh, there. So, so with that, I mean, I'll ask uh, Mr. McTudis if he wants to add anything. Sure, Mr. McTutus, thank you. Well, thank you for joining us, sir. Yeah, I'm sorry, well, through you. you know. uh, that, that, yeah. Understood, yeah. yes. It, yeah, thank you, uh, Len, uh, Chairman, members of the board. Yeah, the only thing um, I'll add is these are um, advisory plaques, so they would go on, um, you know, the, the existing stop signs. So they go on five, the five approaches that have the stop signs, every approach except Park Ave northbound, which does not have stop control. So they, these are MUTC uh, compliant. They're not regulatory signs. They're just advisory information signs. And, um, you know, we were trying to come up with a method that um, would give motorists uh, more information at a confusing intersection, but wouldn't create uh, more confusion at the intersection. You can see similar signs at uh, Dow, Dow Avenue in the frontage road. Um, where it goes under Route 2 there, where there's um, advisory signs that say, you know, um, um, cross traffic does not stop. And there's a sim similar kind of placard. So, um, yeah, so there's there's kind of precedent uh, for these signs. And uh, we think, you know, uh, obviously, if you, you know this intersection, it is confusing, particularly if people don't know it. So we think it would um, add some benefit to um, try to uh, make it clear uh, which is kind of an unconventional, you know, um, five-way stop sign at a six-lane, six-lane intersection. Thank you very much. Yeah. And thanks, Jeff, for clarifying and correcting me, you know, in a gentle way. We, so it is five signs versus three, you know, so, and they recommend the five, you know. Uh, oh, thank you. Sure. Thank you. Um, Was that a motion? Um, or you want to discuss it? No, I, no, I, no. I, I just wanted to ask if I could either um, through the chair to Mr. Diggins or, or to our Transportation Advisory Committee member, Mr. Max Tudis. Um, I understand there's the preferred option, which is the five sign option. And then there's an, an um, alternative option of, of three signs, um, which I was sort of leaning towards that. So I guess I would ask, um, 
but but I'm fine. It, my question is, how preferred is the preferred option, or it, is it really a 50-50? Or I mean, I'll, I want to go with what TAC is there. Yeah. So you know what I'm trying to ask. Yeah, yeah I think I think one way <laughs> I think don't. might be you know, <laughs> right. What is the strength of that preference, and maybe you could provide some some um, some rationale for the recommendation. So I think the only the TAC preferred the the, the full. You know, five signs. The the only question came up about sign clutter. Um, you know, we, we don't want to kind of over sign it. And if we're going to provide two legs that were kind of lower volume, it'd be Westminster for sure. And then Bow, um, it's somewhat less volume, but um, it still has moderate volume. So the TAC preference is to put all, all five signs. And But there was an option if people... So there may be too many signs or clutter. You could you could back off to three signs, but I I think our preference at this point is is five signs. Okay. Yeah. Was that a motion or you said? Uh, it wasn't a motion, but okay. I I will say I, mean, I understand where you're coming from, Ms. Mahan. I mean, and I was kind of like interested almost in the experiment of it, meaning like put up three and then add two. But 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 generally, I mean, I understand the recommendation, and also I'm, I'm thinking while we're at it. We might as well just do it all, you know, and and because if it if it were a significant cost, then I would say okay, we'll hold off and add the other two later on. But but you know, if we get DPW you know, all set to put up the signs, just go ahead and put up all five, you know, so a little more efficient. Yeah, I'll, I'll just add that these plaques, there's, there's no there's no more there's not going to be any new posts, right? So they just go on the same post that the stop sign. So it's just a a, pl a plaque. Um, you know, underneath the, the, the stop sign. Yeah, I should be more accurate in the way I say things, so right, plaques. Okay. And, and just sort of a process question, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not from Arlington, I mean, and, and everyone who's been in Arlington for a few number of years gets to Downing Squares, mm -hmm. Square can name off the five streets. Um, but if you're not from Arlington, and I'm not looking for more signs, but I'm blanking <laughs> right now trying to pull it up as a visual in my head. If, if you're from out of town and you're coming up Lowell Street and you see a sign that says uh, Park Ave does not stop, Park Ave extension does, is there signage there so people, if they hit that five thing, that, that they'll, they'll know what streets are being talked about that does stop and does not stop? Do we have street signs there? Because I don't think we do on all five. We hit Google Street. We do here. on Bo. Uh, so we sometimes on Westminster, um, but why don't we just leave that and I'll leave it, if I could, Mr. Chair, through you to the town manager, you know, perhaps to ask yeah, DPW or sure. someone, just yeah. to take a peek yeah, at that. Look, yeah. um, and, and they may be, I think with all the construction and stuff we've lost in the detours, we've lost a few, but maybe not. So no need to answer that right now. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. Still waiting for a motion. If we... I'd like to move approval of the uh, preferred option of the five signs. I think you just got scooped, Mr. Hurd. Oh. I'm happy to second it. <laughs> um, Thank you, Mrs. Mahon. Yeah, I mean, I, I prefer the five options, too. Just, I mean, I understand si sign clutter, but they're all on different roads facing away from the intersection. I think if we're going to do it, we might as well provide the information to everyone. Um, I'm having deja vu from about eight years ago, when, I think when I was on TAC with Mr. Max Tudis, that we had come, we were trying to come up with signs for this intersection. I think initially we were trying to see if there was a graphic, some sort of an illustration <laughs> that yeah. would come up with it. And I think at the time someone had suggested just the, the lettering that just kind of explained where the, the through traffic comes from. But I think on many occasions this intersection is been referred to as controlled chaos <laughs> because it's a little crazy, but there's very little crash incidents yeah. at the intersection. Yeah. So, um, but that being said, it still is confusing for a lot of people coming through. Um, so I, you know, I think this is a good idea, and I would be happy to support it. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I want to thank you, Mr. Max Tews, for taking time from the TAC meeting tonight to join us. Um, I, I support the five signs as well. I, I'm familiar with a similar setup in Belmont at the end of Bright Road, Washington Street, and the end of Blanchard Road, and works very well. In that case, it's only three streets. Two out of three have the, have the signage there, and, and I think 
Mr. Hurd said it's controlled chaos. It, it seems to work, but I think this will only help um, make, make, it, make it safer. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think with respect to Belmont's three stop sign inter intersection, Arlington basically says, hold my beer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we got five. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh. Mr. Hurd. <laughs> One other question, and this doesn't need an answer, I guess, now, but just thinking of other intersections, and I know this is sort of the, the way it sets up reminds me of Appleton Street as you go towards where there's Appleton and you know, Dow all comes in together. We've had a lot of, mm -hmm. ha, um, a lot of le correspondence about making that safer, and there's only so much we could do just because of the sheer size of the intersection. But <coughs> wondering if this would be something to think about for that intersection as well, where it's just one street can drive right into the intersection, and the others can't, and to let people know if if there's you know, the DPW is creating one set of signs, maybe we, l we look into them creating two sets of signs if it's easy enough. But I'm not putting that into the vote. I'm just kind of throwing that out for food for thought. Thank you. You know, if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, that, that intersection that Mr. Hurd mentioned is, is currently in, in, the, in the tank for, for TAC to, to look at. There have been some, there's a referral to that. So. Um, a request I might make is, um, you know, in general, be, you know, because we do hear about that with some regularity on other things that, um, you know, we welcome updates from TAC um, in general about pro uh, projects, even if the news is, um, you know, in progress, um, so that we could you know, sure. communicate to people. But, but that's a good point, and I think that idea of, uh, of uh, streamlining and integration is always good to look for those opportunities, those efficiencies. So. But we very much appreciate the work, and, and uh, I was very happy to get this uh, my, myself. I think we heard, uh, I think soon after I was elected, I heard from a constituent with, uh, actually, I don't think we ended up sending it to TAC, but saying, you know, could we please put some signs here? So um, I'm just going to pretend that I made that happen, and well, <laughs> we'll be very happy. Mr. Diggins. Yeah. Well, two things. One is, is I, I don't see a stop sign, I mean, a street sign for park at that intersection on, on Google Street View three, um, three years ago, and I doubt anything has changed, you know. And other is just, I mean, I understand why uh, we don't have a, a light there, but, but as a pedestrian, I mean, it's just a scary intersection, ex intersection, and so, um, and especially when cars keep going, you know, and you're like, which way are they going to turn? And, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, and also along the lines of the timing on this, and, and this is something that I'll take responsibility for as a member of TAC, but this had actually come. This recommendation had been made a while ago, um, and and it um, it just got hung up, you know. And and like I said, I'll take ownership for that. But but this this could have been before us, I mean, as early as June, you know, or actually as early as May, you know. They kind of came just as I was leaving, you know, my role as chair, and and we were going to the town meeting, you know, and, and 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 so um, so so now it's like. I'm going to take ownership of it, which means that I can now solve it. Mean so that mean I'll just make sure that anything that comes out attack. Mean I'll make sure that it gets placed to me before you know the the, the chair <laughs> meeting as soon as possible. So so um, so any delay you know wasn't on the part of TAC. It took a while to study this. Mean uh, of course, but but, uh, uh, but TAC was on the ball and and, uh, and so here we are. You know? Thank you. Well, I appreciate sure. that very much. Sure. Yeah. I know we all do. Okay, so um, we have a motion. Uh, to ad adopt the, uh, the, the tax uh, recommended preferred solution by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? It was a unanimous 5 nothing vote. Thank you very much, uh, Jeff, and uh, tell tech we said hi and that we appreciate their work. And that I missed them. Me, I'll, I'll and that see. Mr. Diggins misses them terribly. I will, I will let them know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. <laughs> All right. Uh, wow. We are already at correspondence received. Um, Don't so, jinx it. Yeah, exactly. We have um, item 12, request for no parking this side signs to extend on Wildwood Avenue by from Amy Duke at 33 Newman Way and uh, a memo um, advising the board and the public about the Civilian Police Advisory Commission appointments. So I'll turn to the board for any motions to receive. So, uh, motion receipt and direct me number 12 to the town manager, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, that's it. Thank you, sir. Second. All right. Any further discussion? 
Okay, and a motion to um, receive both items and to, to refer item 12 to the town manager by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. All item in favor? 13, you mean? I'm sorry? You mean item 13? I do, yes. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. Um, so, um, all in favor, please say yay. aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous vote. I'm sorry, what just happened there, 13? Um, I rece we, we received both of them. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah right, we received right. both and then referred uh, item 12. Okay, to great. That's what I thought. Okay, right, yeah. Yeah. Is that your understanding, Attorney Cunningham? Yes. The, the guardian of our, of our uh, legal record here. Oh. <laughs> all right, thank you. Correct. Correct, Mr. Chair. That's right. That's always the right answer, except when it's not. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, now we move on to board and staff announcements. And we'll start in our usual order from our... Uh, Valued Board Administrator, Mrs. No Ms. New Mar. <laughs> no new board announcements. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, Attorney Cunningham. No announcements, Mr. Chair. Mr. Feeney. Uh, no announcements this evening. Thank you. Mrs. Mahan. Um, just leave it to the um, chair's purview um, since we're, we're having a special town meeting on and off night. Yes. Um, if usually uh, when we have a select board meeting, um, we start at 7. Um, but we can start at 715. You, you set the agenda, but um, it's, but I just wanted to just traditionally we we start at seven. Very rarely have we started at 645 and it's um, usually during select board meetings um, during re annual or special town mm -hmm. meetings, the citizens, the uh, open forum. Um, usually isn't an agenda item so but I'll leave that to the chair so but I'm just going to leave in my mind that it the 715 may be a seven it may not I'll leave that up to you okay yeah thank you for that for bringing that up and I'll make sure I get some clarity on that particularly for our upcoming meeting yeah. thank you no nothing else uh, Mr. Hearn Mr. Gorsi. no announcements Mr. Diggins. I am excited to say that I was just reelected for the fifth term being as chair of the Advisory Council for the Boston Region Metropolitan Planning Organization, you know, and, and uh, I had just been elected for my first term when people asked me to consider running for select board. And my first question to uh, Mr. Heim was, can I still do that? Because I was so excited you know, about this position. And as I told uh, uh, my colleagues on the advisory board, I also said, I told this to the town manager, and I hope it didn't scare him when I said, you know, I, I am more idealistic in my, or I'm just as idealistic in my fifth term there, you know, as I was in the first, and I told the town manager, me, I'm as idealistic about, you know, being on this, be on a select board as I am, you know, for my first term, because I really do believe that government can do good things, you know, uh, and if you, if you work at it, you know, uh, you can really make a positive difference, I mean, and, and I feel that even more so on the, Advisory Council, because another thing you all heard me say a lot is that in any, most other parts of the country, mean, mean a location that's five miles mean from a major city would be a neighborhood mean uh, of that city. And it's because of the nature of our politics here in, in Massachusetts that we have independence, you know, uh, but, but we, that means that we all need to work together, you know, in order to uh, make the region work because we sink or swim as a region, and that's what the advisory council to the Boston Region um, Metropolitan Planning Organization is all about. So I'm thrilled, you know, and 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 so. Um, Congratulations. Yeah, well, Congratulations. 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 Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. That. Okay, nothing for me other than just to note um, that our next select board meeting is scheduled for uh, October 23rd. Prior, currently noticed for 6:30 p.m. Is that right, Ms. Mark? October 17th. 17th. Oh, so the 17th, okay, so that is... The first night of that's town, the first, that's the next. Yeah, we typically yeah. meet the first night of town meeting, just to just state case. that we are in session. Right, okay, I mean, yeah, 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 no, that, that makes sense, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. All right, so there we go. Um, I think that's it. So, move to adjourn. Second. We have a motion to adjourn by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous, we are adjourned.